Are you ready to take your business to the next level and make the money you want so that you can create the impact you desire? Then you're in the right place. It's possible to run a successful business built around your life. Get ready for a little bit of tough love and a whole lot of strategy to grow your business without sacrificing your sanity. If you're ready to get out of your own way and step into the role of CEO, then let's go. I'm Amy Tra, and this is the Motivated CEO Podcast. Welcome back to the Motivated CEO Podcast. Today, I am talking with Haley Luckadoo about intentional audacity. And if you're listening to this going, what? I've never heard that term. You are in for a treat today. I can't wait to dive into this conversation. But before we do, I would love to welcome in Haley. Welcome to the podcast. Oh my gosh. Hi. Thank you for having me. I am so excited for this conversation. I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait to like, I feel like we've known each other forever yet. This is our <laughs> first time, like actually connecting like face to face so with zoom. It's wild. It's just the <laughs> online space is this bizarre, bizarre world, but it is so we crazy. dive in, like, tell us all the details about yourself, who you are. Oh my gosh. You serve. Yes. Where to begin. Um, so funny story. I never, never imagined. So I'm Haley Luckadoo. Obviously I am a marketing coach, a motivational speaker and the founder of females on fire, but never imagined myself in entrepreneurship at all. Um, and I actually went through college very multi-passionate. And when I say very multi-passionate, I mean, I changed my major nine times <laughs> and I always tell people it, it wasn't that I didn't know what I wanted to do. It's just that I wanted to do everything. And that has pretty much built my business, just wanting to do everything and being so excited about new things all the time. And I actually, uh, went, was about to go into my senior year of college. This is kind of where my entrepreneurship story originates. Uh, I was about to go into my senior year of college. I was also about to get married to my high school boyfriend. We've been together for six years and we were supposed to get married in June, start our senior year in August. In May, he called it off totally out of the blue. And about a week later, I got a letter from my school saying, Hey, we know you're on financial aid. We know you can't afford to be here, but we cut your financial aid. So figure it out or don't come back. <laughs> it, that was, that was pretty much summing it up. Right. And I just remember like being on my mom's couch, crying my eyes out for like three days straight and feeling like my life was over. And I think that's something that most entrepreneurs, they have that moment that they can resonate with where they're just like, I am so miserable. I don't know what I'm going to do next. And that's how really incredible businesses are usually born. <laughs> so I actually, I, I, I remember getting back to my apartment. All my friends had gone home for the summer. There's wedding stuff everywhere. And I'm like, what do I do now? Because I have no you know, I'm not going to have a, a degree, so I'm not going to have a job. And I don't even know where I'm going to live. Cause I was supposed to move in with my like soon to be husband. And now I don't have any of that either. And I don't, what am I going to do? And I just remember thinking, I can't keep working these silly little like college jobs that I'm doing forever. So I have to figure something out. And that was kind of always my life motto is you just have to figure it out. Just do something and see what happens. And I remember thinking the only skill that I feel like I have is that I just planned my own wedding. <laughs> and even though it didn't happen, it was going to be so good. And it was so organized and everything was so pretty. And I had a lot of friends getting married. And so, you know, kind of jumping forward a little bit, I just decided I'm going to get them to pay me enough money to pay my bills. I'm going to plan their weddings. And then I'm, I'm just going to do that until I figure out what I'm going to do next. And I ran a, a, an amazing wedding planning company for five years and just fell in love with running a business, fell in love with marketing, fell in love with helping other people build up their businesses and their social media and all of that fun stuff. And, um, in year three started a second company that fast forwarding many years has transitioned kind of into what I have today. We closed down the wedding planning company and that kind of led me to start the females on fire podcast, which was back in 2018. And now here we are females on fire is this full, amazing community. We've got 
the podcast is still going. We have virtual events. We have our first in-person event coming up this year, which I'm so pumped about. And I know we'll talk about it at some point. And we've got all of these incredible like programs and courses helping women not only grow their businesses, but also just become that person that they want to be and build up that really audacious self-belief that they can truly do anything and live their dream life. Um, and so it's just been this incredible, incredible journey. And, you know, I, I skipped a bunch of steps in there, but, uh, the story is getting a little long, so you get the gist, but it's just been this wild ride. And I'm, I'm so grateful for what I get to do every day now. Isn't it the coolest thing as an entrepreneur, when you look back at that journey and you go, wow, so wow, crazy. It all makes <laughs> sense though, doesn't it? And I feel like, like exactly as you said, we all have that rock bottom moment in yes. our life where it's like something has to change. We don't have a clue how it's going to change. And usually what we start out with evolves into something so much bigger, better, and greater. And it's like the coolest thing ever. And it I is. still have friends that like look at me and they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm living my dream because at this point, like there's no failure. There's yeah. just redirection. And it's so much fun. Like I yeah. get to do this. I don't have to be stuck in a career that's <laughs> no longer serving me. You know, for me, it was like, you know, I worked in this job that I thought I was like, had to be married to for the rest of my life. And it's like, wait, no, I can change my mind and that's okay. So I, I love, love hearing these stories from fellow entrepreneurs that it's like, yeah, like we figure it out. As Marie yep. Forleo says, everything is figure outable. We yeah. have grit, we have the tenacity, but it all starts with belief. Yes. And what brings us to today's topic is that idea of intentional audacity. Yeah. So for those listening that are going like, what the heck, intentional audacity? <laughs> How do we even start to unpack that? Yeah, oh my gosh, I love this. So intentional audacity, Honestly, it's just a term that I kind of coined a couple of years ago when I was in a mastermind and we were, we were sitting around and, um, some of the women and myself were sitting around talking about these really big goals that we had. And I remember a friend of mine, she's talking about it and she's like, I, I just want to do this. And we were like, mm, but like, what, what's beyond that? And she's like, I don't know. I have no idea. And we were like, I mean, if you could like dream even bigger, if there were no limits, if there, if there was nothing stopping you, what would be beyond that? And she started talking and she had these huge, crazy goals that she just never said out loud. And it was so cool, but then she started spiraling. Right. And that's what we kind of do. We start dreaming bigger. And when we start like allowing ourselves to go there, then we're like, screw it. Like there's no limits, you know, like, like I could fly to the moon. Like, it's just, you know, we come up with these like crazy, crazy things. And I'm all about crazy things. Dream big, go hard, be delusional, be totally delusional. I love it. I love delusion. It's great, but do it with a plan, right? Do it with a goal. And so I remember looking at her and being like, okay, that sounds amazing. You could totally do all of those things, but why? why do you want to do those things? And then she was like, I don't know. I thought we were just like playing around and dreaming big and there were no limits. I'm like, there are no limits. You can do any of those things you just named. But if you fight for that life that you just pictured, you're going to burn out and you're going to be exhausted and it's not going to be fulfilling because there was zero intention behind it. And so I, I literally remember telling her like, be audacious. Cause that was my, that's my word. Audacious is my word. Be audacious, but be intentional. And so intentional audacity was coined. And it really is just the concept of allowing yourself to go there, right? Allowing yourself to say, what if there were no limits? What if I had no financial burden? What if I didn't have to stress about, oh, am I going to be able to pay the bills this month? Am I going to be able to feed my family this month? What if time wasn't an issue? What if, you know, hiring somebody wasn't an issue? What if there were truly no limits to what you were capable of doing? But then where would you go when you added the intention to it? Where would you go that would be the most fulfilling for you? What would you want to do that would truly light you up and isn't just dreaming big for the sake of dreaming big. 
And so that's all intentional audacity is. And we can kind of get into like how you start leveraging this and some fun exercises, but that's, that's kind of the concept when you, when you really just kind of break it down. Mm, So much there to unpack. And I love how you talk about just dreaming big because I feel like when we're kids, we're so good at it. You know, it's like, I'm going to be a veterinarian on the moon (laughs) and, you know, have my own kingdom with rainbows and butterflies. Okay, (laughs) cool. But then as we shift into adulthood, we start making these, these safe goals, these realistic goals, but I love how you're blending together. Yes. Dream as big as you can. That is so important, but anchoring it to the why. Yeah, that right there is powerful because when you don't have a why, you're right. You are going to burn out. You are going to be in this uphill battle because you don't know what you're actually striving for at the end of the day. And that I think in this age that we're living in of information overload is so key. Mm -hmm. We lose sight of that inner knowing, that inner voice that tells us exactly what we need to do, what the next step should be. All of those things guiding us as that North Star in the right direction, we lose sight of it because we're adopting everybody else's goals as our own. So I wanna know, okay, when someone's like, yes, okay, I wanna dream big, I need to know the why, like how do we start to unpack this? How do we discover this for ourselves? Yeah. And I'm so glad you mentioned too, just like when we were kids, because when I, when I talk about this on stages and I give this as a keynote, I even talk about like, what did you dream of being when you were six years old? Because I wanted to be the first ballerina in space, but I would have said, I would have settled for a Disney princess. Like that would have been fine. Yeah, You know? And like, who, who decided that that wasn't an, I mean, you know, Disney princess, I was, you know, whatever. But my husband's like, I kind of think you are. Cause like animals just flock to you and you're outside. And it's, you know, I think bluebirds dress you in the morning. Cause you're always so happy. And I'm like, you know, okay, I, I'll take it. Like, that's my version of Disney princess. I'll take it. And so it's just like, when did you stop? When did you stop just allowing yourself to be totally delusional <laughs> about what you're able to do? And so I love, I love this question of like, you know, if somebody's all for this, like, what do they do now? And so I have a, a quick little exercise that you walk yourself through. It takes some time. So you'll have to do it, you know, after you're listening to this, but write down your goal, grab a piece of paper, sit down, just take a few minutes, write down the goal. What's the big goal. What's the big dream. Right. And now I want you to start to ask yourself, what if, and I, and just go down this rabbit hole where you say, what if I could do it bigger? What if more people showed up? What if, what if, what if, what if, and just don't stop asking and write down everything that comes up, right? So what if we hosted our first in-person conference this year? What if we opened it up to 800 people? What if a thousand showed up? What if you know, a hundred of those women jumped into our program. What if we were then able to hire somebody else to come in and like help coach and help do these things and whatever. What if we ran a smaller event after that for the people who couldn't make it to the big conference? What if that led us to do this? What if that led us to do that? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if, and just let yourself go there and don't stop. Don't, don't stop anything that comes out that you're going to, you're going to get to that point. The first few, you're going to like cheat yourself, you know, like you're, you're going to do the obvious stuff. Right. But as you, it starts to get harder, right. To not let yourself be limitless. And so let yourself go there. And then you're going to get to the point where you're allowing yourself to write it, but you're like, this is ridiculous. This is never going to happen. Oh my gosh. But just let yourself do that and just keep on writing and keep on going and go down that rabbit hole. Don't limit any of your possibilities. Do that until you physically can't come up with anything else, right? At this point, you should be at the most delusional you've ever been. (laughs) Like, it should be like, what if we hosted a conference on the moon? Like, I want that level of delusion, right? First ballerina in space, I'm, I'm all about the moon, right? So now- This is the tricky part. Now you go back through, you start back at the top with the original goal, right? And you go back through and you ask 
why. So we asked, what if that was our first question? Now you ask why, and you go, why did this come up for me? And you answer that. And then you go to the next one and you go, why did this come up for me? And again, it's easy in the beginning, right? Because you know why you want the big, the big goal, right? But as you started to get a little bit delusional, you're like, why did that come up? Why would I want to host a conference on the moon? Why would that ever be a thing? And you start to have to really dig deep into why you want what you want. And if you're sitting here and you're thinking, yeah, but I was being delusional. I don't even actually know if I want that. There's some tiny piece of it that you really want. And it, it may not be the exact thing, right? So I, I grew up in dance, right? I said, I wanted to be the first ballerina in space. I loved dance. Was I a good dancer? Yes. Was I good enough to probably actually make that a career? No, not so much. And I knew that, but it actually, I love to dance, but it wasn't that I actually wanted to make that a career. It's that I really, really love being on stages. That's what comes up when you start to ask why. And so then it becomes, Ooh, how do I leverage that passion of being on stage in a way that makes more sense than me trying to pursue a career in dance, because that's not necessarily what I want to do. And now I get on stages all the time as a speaker, and that's so much more aligned, right? That's so much more perfect for me and for my talent and for what I love doing and what I want to pursue for the rest of my life. And so when you start to ask why, even with those really, really delusional things, you start to get to the root of what am I good at? What do I love doing? What is the impact that I want to make on the world? What do I want to do for my family, for my community? What do I just like, what's that bucket list thing that I want to do before I'm gone? Right. And you start to dig into those things and you have, the thing is you have to approach this with that childlike tenacity that we talked about earlier. You have to allow yourself to be six years old again and go through and because we know, right. Kids will say the craziest things. They will dream so big. There are no limits for them, but we also know they love to ask why, right? Yep. Kids love to ask you why. And then you answer them and they go, but why, but why, but why, but why until you hate the, the letter Y you hate the word Y, right? That's what you have to do. You have to allow yourself to be six years old, dream with just limitless abandon. And then just continue to ask why until you can't anymore. And when you do that and you look at this piece of paper, you start to connect the dots of, oh, this was the original goal. Here's all of these talents that kept coming up for me that I really want to use. Here's all of these impacts that I really want to make on the world and things that I really want to do for the good of my community, right? Or the good of my family. Here's all these things that I just want to do for me. Here's all of these things that I'm so passionate about. They just light me up and get me so excited. And here's all the ways that I think I'm so unique in my ability to do this. And when you start to blend all of those things together, you so beautifully get this roadmap for where you want to go. And that end destination is so much bigger than the first goal you wrote down, right? Because now you're not just dreaming of hosting an event, you're dreaming of, what if we had this huge, incredible worldwide community where a bunch of women host events, you know, under our brand or something, and, and we get the word out about this and that, and like, you start to get so fired up about the vision that you forget that you originally thought it was a limit. And you, when you allow yourself to do that long enough, your delusions aren't so delusional anymore. And they start to come true. And you start to realize that the only thing that was ever stopping you was you, but you have this intentionality now, and there's such a focus and such a drive and such a roadmap for you that it doesn't feel hard. It doesn't feel stressful. It doesn't constantly feel like you're like, what do I do now? What do I do next? I don't know what to, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know how to do this. Right. Because you're like, I don't know how to do this, but I'll figure it out because here's my roadmap and here's where I'm going. And you also don't get caught up in what everybody else is doing. You can look at another woman and go, oh, that's so great for her. Good for her. That's amazing. But I'm going over here. And I know that. 
And I'm so focused on that. And sure, there will be, you know, roadblocks and detours. And sometimes it takes longer to get there than you thought and all of those things. But you've got the roadmap, you've got the vision, and it's so limitless and so much bigger than you and so much bigger than that original goal that you were feeding yourself. But you have to give it that that childlike tenacity and start digging into this and just be really audacious and really intentional about it. Oh, what a powerful exercise. <laughs> I am literally encouraging you, like save this episode, yes. go back, <laughs> listen to it, mark a time on your calendar to go through this. What I love about this exercise, because I've heard similar ones unpacking the why, but I love how we, we start by removing the risk. We remove that judgment by asking what if. It's hypothetical, right? Mm -hmm. So by asking what if, now we're taking the rational thinking off the table. And that opens up so many possibilities because now we're not worried. We're not worried about what everybody else is thinking. And we're tuning back into ourselves. And like you said, when we get to the root of what it is that we want, that's where we can make an impact. Because yeah. every single one of us has an impact to make on this world. We can and we should. That is our responsibility to make an impact on the world. But you have to take the time to get out of your own way. And exactly as you said, you know, once you know the why, once you know that deep rooted impact of what it is, then yeah, you can connect the dots. You can make a plan. You can find the people that can help you get there. And it gets to be fun. Now, yeah. something I think about all the time, and I want to hear your thoughts on this. Why do we stop dreaming big? Like, why do we do that? You know, as kids, yeah. we're always doing this. But why as adults do we, we play small and we get in our own way? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, this could be a whole episode on, I know, on its own, right? <laughs> like we could, oh, I love it. Um, it's so funny. I'm actually, I, I, I'd say I'm in the process. I've been in the process for like three years now, uh, of writing a book on, on this very thing. Yeah. Um, and I really believe that, you know, as kids, we don't, uh, kids just see the world so differently, right? We don't realize that, that some things just aren't possible for us. Right. We don't realize the family we were born into and maybe the, some of the limitations that maybe come along with that, right. Maybe financial limitations or, you know, things like that. We don't realize any of that stuff as kids. And I think as we start to get older, right. And you see your friends with like, the, the new, the new style, whatever the new thing is, right. The new fad, whatever that is like you, you see your friends getting that and you want that too. And then you see your friends doing really cool things and you want that too. And then all of a sudden you're in high school and everybody is pushing you to decide, like, are you going to go to college? Are you going to go to trade school? Are you going to travel the world? Like, what are you going to do? You need to pick something. You need to pick something. You need to pick something. And all of a sudden you're like, okay, I, you know, this is the person that I am. This is my personality. And that personality may not even really be your own. It's a combination of your parents' beliefs and your friends and what they think and what they think is cool. And even, you know, I just remember even the music I listened to was very influenced by my friends. Right. And, and that's who you become is this person who's constantly chasing what you believe everyone around you thinks is cool. What everyone around you wants you to be or whatever your, it doesn't have to be cool. Whatever your word is that you're trying to aspire to, right. As an angsty teenager. And then, you know, you turn 18 and they kick you out in the world and maybe you go to college. Maybe you don't. If you go to college, then they're like, you've got four years to figure this out, get it figured out. What do you want to do for the rest of your life? What do you want to do until you die? You have four years to figure it out. We know you're basically still a kid, but figure it out. Yeah. And in the meantime, you're learning to live on your own and you're still worried. Does everybody think I'm cool? And you don't want to embarrass yourself and you don't want to do anything really stupid, but you also want to live your life and have fun. And so it's just this constant of being put in a box, right? And so for my friends, I get put in this box. 
And from my parents, I get put in this box. And from, you know, my community, I get put in this box and society wants to put me in this box because this is what I look like. And this is where I come from. And this is who I am. Right. And as we get older, you know, it's, it's a whole lot harder to unpack a box than it was to pack it the first time. And I wish that were true about moving. Right. But it's usually the other way around. It's a lot harder to pack it the first time. (laughs) Uh, but but it, it's true. Like we grow up and we start to realize that like, oh, this is not really who I want to be, but where do I start? Where do I start in unpacking this? Right. Who am I really? I don't, do I even know the type of music that I actually like to listen to? Right. Do, do I know what I wanted? And, and now, you know, oh, I'm in my, I'm in my twenties. I'm in my thirties. I'm in my forties. Is it too late? Is it, have I missed my chance because I didn't figure it out back in college? Have I, am I just stuck with this personality because this is who I was in high school? Like we start to question that and between our daily life and taking care of our family and doing our job, whatever that looks like, the idea of having to sit with ourselves and unpack all of that seems like way too much. And so for most people, it's so much easier to just say, "Eh, it's fine. It's gotten me this far. Is it my dream life? No, but it's okay. It's all right. It's fine. And that's, and so we just live with it. And every time I catch myself, you know, because we all do that. And every time I catch myself saying, you know what, this box is comfy. This, Mm -hmm. this box feels nice. I remember that this is it this is my only life, you know, and this is my only opportunity to be married to my husband. This is my only opportunity to chase this dream. This is my only opportunity to live where I live. This is my only opportunity to impact these people. I get one shot at this. And if I want to sit around and go, eh, well, this box has gotten me this far, then I have wasted a whole opportunity to look at what life actually looks like outside of the boxes. And the box may feel warm and cozy and comfortable, and you may have gotten nice and snuggly in there. And the world may seem terrifying outside of that box, but gosh, the world is so cool. You know, there's so many things you can do outside of that box. And so I, it's just, I think that's, you know, kind of the long answer to your question that I I think we just put ourselves in these boxes for the sake of fitting in, for the sake of feeling comfortable, for the sake of, because everybody told us we had to, you know, and it just gets easier and easier as we go along to say, eh, it's fine, but you're not here just to be fine. You're here to live a life it's fulfilling and exciting and impactful. And there are very few people that get to do that in their lifetime. And by get to, I mean, choose to, and you can be one of those people, but it, it has to be uncomfortable for a little while. Oh, mic drop moment right there. <laughs> Haley, this was incredible. You have shared just such valuable perspectives. That exercise was amazing. How can we get into your world, learn more about you, your event coming up in August in person? Tell us all the things. Oh my gosh. Yes. I am so excited about our conference. I know I've mentioned it a couple of times, but it is our first in-person ever. So we're very excited. It is the females on fire conference. It's happening August 7th and 8th in Dallas, Texas. We have this absolutely gorgeous theater in downtown Dallas that I just like cannot wait to be in and be on stage in front of. It's going to be amazing, but it's two days. Day one is all business and day two is all personal growth and motivation. And our theme for this event is hard truths. Mm -hmm. And it's very much like what we talked about today. It is giving you the hard truths of business It is giving you the hard truths of life and personal growth. And you're not going to find speakers that are like, this is the only way to do it. This is how you have to do it. But you're also not going to find really fluffy stuff. 
You're going to leave with really legitimate strategies, but in a way that you can go implement them for yourself. And they're very personalized. You're going to leave with motivation that feels very personalized and very true to who you are. And that's, that's the goal, right? We just want to help you build this absolutely wild, insane business that funds your dream life while helping you really not just step into who you want to be, but figure out who you want to be and decide who that woman is. Uh, and so I'm so excited. I can't, the speaker lineup is insane. I can't believe we got these people like every, literally every day. Now I look at my husband and I go, what is this life? Who are we? Like, this is so crazy. And so it's just going to be so much fun. There's going to be such a sense of community. You're going to make so many connections. You're going to get so many, you know, wonderful things that you can go home with and implement. And, uh, tickets are on sale now. They start at only $97. So even if you're on a tight budget, you can probably get yourself in the room. Um, and there's just some really amazing opportunities there. So head over to femalesonfireconference.com, grab your ticket, come join us. Uh, if that's not in the cards for you this year, or if you can't wait till August, check out the females on fire podcast. And I'm at Haley Luckadoo on Instagram. And I'd love to hear from you and hear what your crazy audacious dream is and just cheer you on and support you. So hit me up over there. Amazing. Haley, thank you so much for taking time out of your crazy busy schedule to <laughs> share with our listeners today. Seriously. I appreciate you. Oh, it was so fun. Thank you for having me. Yes. And until next time, cheers to making the money you want so that you can create the impact you desire. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 